we're just doing uh, a little bit of grounding and coming into the into the space together into this virtual space together so the invitation right now is to I just rest your eyes either downward or if you are comfortable closing your eyes and taking that transitioning breath in between all the doing and the intention to arrive and the workouts and cups of tea and other things that we do before arriving here into this space, this moving fearless space with um, us. And take a nice deep breath or just a breath, a breath in and out, connecting us to this moment with this body in this place wherever that is for you, let your body relax into whatever you're sitting or lying upon. And bring your attention to your breath. And as you breathe in, so you can open your belly. Relax those all the muscles around your belly and let that breath move down into your belly. And as you breathe into you sitting here, at the same time being aware of what's around you, the sounds we, you might be hearing. And let yourself breathe into those. The sensations you a feeling with your body. The feeling of whatever's supporting you at the moment. Your feet on the ground. Be aware of thoughts moving around. And your heart. Let's breathe into our heart with all that it does for us, supports us. brings us alive to this place, to this moment. And be aware of all the feelings We'll just take night two nice deep breaths into that belly again and then we'll slowly open our eyes and just have a moment to see each other before we dive in. So two nice deep breaths, breathing in, opening your belly, breathing out, letting your body relax, breathing in, into your belly and breathing out. And let's slowly just open a soft focus onto us and seeing all the women, I think we're all women to this morning, here on the screen, coming together to 
celebrate the solstice and renew our creative path with Gina, Deb and I. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yo. <laughs> so I know almost everybody on the screen, but for those who don't know me, my name is Deborah and I'm on the Fearless Communicators team. And despite the fact that I grew up in Australia, I'm not there now. I'm based in Brooklyn. Um, and so it's um, with great delight that I connect to my Australian sisters and to the Australian chat series. So there's just a couple of different rituals and traditions we have with Fearless Communicators. And the first one is before we begin, we ask permission from our self-identified elders in our community, permission to begin. So if you identify in this life at this moment as an elder, we ask you to just give us a little bit of a elevated sparkulation, wrinkling your fingers for us, giving us permission to begin. Thank you, elders. We also have acknowledgement of country. I am I in, in Brooklyn, I'm on Lenape Kanasi land. And for everybody else, if you feel so inspired to, you can add into the chat where you are at the moment. Mm. Um, with all the different places in Australia that you are, which land you are on in this time. And just wanting to acknowledge that, I'm just gonna read this off to the side also, cause I'm still actually getting this embodied for us. This is a US based company. And we acknowledge that we stand and operate on indigenous land and honor ancestors and elders past, present and emerging. We also acknowledge the existence and prevalence of institutional racism, misogyny, ageism, ableism, and LGBTQ plus phobia. And we use our bodies and our stories and our voices in the service of dismantling that oppression. So that's who you've met with today, fearless communicators and also moving communication, which is um, Johanna's company based- me. So this, fearless communicators, when the world started turning upside down in March, we quickly needed yeah. to... I'm just going to pause. Someone's got some sound coming through. I wonder if we could um, just mute just while... Pardon me, Deb, just so I can hear. There's... Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Yep. So the, this Moving Fearlessly chat series is like the emergence out of a chat series we've had here in the US which began at the moment when the world started turning upside down and everyone was like, what's going on? We're all going into shelter in place um, in, and wondering what is actually shifting in our world. And so it feel as communicators, we were actually due to be on a plane and flying to Sydney, which we needed to obviously postpone um, back in March. Um, and so what we've been doing since is creating community online and inviting the many amazing thought leaders in our community to share what they know and how they can service to everybody at this time as we're trying to figure out what's actually going on, what direction are we moving in and how am I dancing through this shifting landscape? So that's what we've been doing in the US since March and it's been so much fun and amazingly grounding and successful that Johanna a little while ago said to us, what about us? What about an Australian <laughs> time zone chat series? And we went, well, yes. And so that's how we got to this collaboration of fearless communicators and moving communication. And so it's, um, it's a delight because Johanna mm. and I have known each other for many years and now we get to play every week, bringing <laughs> some of our fearless friends online to <coughs> be with us. So Yo, if you wanted to say anything about moving communication before we um, launch in to our chat today. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Deb. Yeah, so um, my uh, company name is Moving Communication and I called it Moving Communication because I am very interested in bringing the body in to communication. I have a long history of working with the body and in as a healer. I also um, work for many years as a masseuse and uh, moving into um, through from uh, healing into theatre and into leadership and coaching. And I find every time I bring the body in, it unleashes 
our creativity and unleashes a, a level of connection that is not always possible by thinking and talking. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, there's a beautiful alignment with fearless and a wonderful alignment with, with Gina yeah. and what we're here to do today. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Such a delight. Mm. So today we've all turned up to hang out with a shaman. And last October, Eduardo and I were in Sydney for our Fearless Force um, program. So Fearless Force, for those who don't know, is a program that we run, which I'm very proud manager of, where we work with women in the crafting and the designing of a signature speech. And we have some of our alumni on um, on the screen now. So if you're an alumni, if you just want to like give us a little bit of elevated sparkulation of the women who have done our program before. Satara, so that's you. You're in. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah baby, that's what we want. So in, in Fearless Communicators, this elevated sparkulation is like the, um, the clap, the applause, the recognition. So at any time, if you see me doing this, it's like, that's what it is. And you can, you're free to elevate and sparkulate any time you want. Yeah. <laughs> Last October, we were in um, Sydney running a Fearless Force program and just before the program began, one, one woman just said, actually, I can't do it. And suddenly there was a space and I was staying with Johanna and I was like, yo, I want to fill this space. It's such an awesome program. I want it to be filled with a woman who needs it. Who, do, who, who, who can we fill? Who, who can we call in? And I started doing this. I'm calling her in. I'm calling her in. In Yo's living room. And then Yo went, I wonder about Gina. Maybe Gina. <laughs> Yo called Gina. Gina said, yeah, I'd be interested. I called Gina. And by the end of the call, Gina was in. It was a yes. Gina was like, yes, I know what I want to talk about. Yes, this is what I want to do. And so that is how Gina came to be with us at Fearless Communicators, to be a participant in our Fearless Force program. And also she has the very privileged position of being the very first shaman I ever met. So I identify as a witch and I hang out with witches a lot, but I'd never met a shaman before until Gina. <laughs> Gina's my first shaman. And it's my delight to introduce you to Gina today. And Gina, over to you to introduce yourself to the group and what's going to happen today on our chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, beautiful women. And um, welcome to everybody here. Thanks for uh, arriving at 8 a.m., um, except for those on the other side of the world. <laughs> and I've got a little presentation to go through, but just wanted to talk a little bit about myself first and uh, just a, a few minutes to get you to, those who don't know me, uh, to help you understand where I've come from. But um, the, the thing with being a shaman is that it's very much uh, inner connection. And that inner connection is very much nature for me. And I call nature my culture, essentially. Mm -hmm. And the, the little story that I want to tell today, rather than going through my entire life story, it is a little bit like that in a different way. But because we're women and because we're uh, connected in so many ways, I wanted to bring three things here today. And it's talking about the maiden, the mother and the crone. And these three elements go through feminine um, history from when time began. And when I was a young maiden, um, they, they do have a little bit of a stereotype around them. There was, a, there was a purity and an innocence about that time. And there's no definitive age there, but there's, a, there's an inquiry. There's this beautiful experience that you are moving through as a child into your adolescence, moving in and out of that. And all the, um, uh, all the experiences, whether traumatic or whether beautiful and, and celebrations, all part of who we are and how we learn, how we grow. And I loved my childhood. I think I was fairly blessed. I grew up running around in nature, literally, and surrounded by animals. And there were four kids. So, and I'm a twin, so I always had a buddy of some kind in some form. And so very, very blessed in that sense in my childhood. But um, at the same time, I was painfully shy as a teenager. And that because we were, we were quite closed in. 
as children, not exposed to much. And moving out of that teenager and into university, I felt like the world just popped open and I was experiencing all sorts of things into my 20s and just catching up with, with being human, I think. And as I moved into um, experiencing life in so many ways, travel and new friends and all of the, the, the delicious parts of um, what we're here to do and be, um, uh, I met my partner and uh, we decided to go traveling and work overseas. And five years in, we began a family. And so that mother energy came in around that 29, 28 years. And that's where this whole new experience of responsibility and a humbling um, energy would come through, came through to be uh, another archetype. So the maiden wasn't, it hadn't ended. Maiden was still there. She was transitioning into this beautiful motherly type of uh, energy. And that, that helped me grow in ways to appreciate life very differently, appreciate myself and appreciate others. And um, throughout that, that um, children, if you have children, you, we all know how um, humbling they make you. <laughs> so it's a, the, my greatest joy, I have three beautiful girls to reflect back to me all my intricacies. <laughs> so I am constantly learning. So they are by far my greatest teachers. So I'm very grateful for those little mini mirrors. And um, now I really feel like I'm moving into that crone where I'm really happy where I am. Things are shifting into wisdom. There's this really delicious energy within me that wakes up and just looks around and marvels at the wonder of life and the appreciation that I have and an understanding of how to harmonise myself and bring harmony to others and, and radiate that harmony to the world. Uh, particularly now. So um, it's really important for me in my work and where I'm going with my own mission, personal and collective. So that's kind of where I'm at right now in that beautiful, wise woman kind of stage. But uh, my inner child and my uh, all those other community of selves, they come out all the time and play. So I'm really, um, I know how to manage my team and um, I really have lots of fun with them. So it's kind of part of my story <coughs> to date. Yeah. And so, Gina, today, as our urban shaman, tell us more about this renewal of creative path. Like, I, I don't, you know, like, I know what it means because I've been working. <laughs> but let's dive in with... The detail. Why, at, what's, why do it at solstice? Like so that we can all start to interact with. Okay. Um. So I've got uh, a little presentation I'd love to share if everybody wants to see a few slides and uh, it's got a little bit of information. Then we'll go through the process as well. So I'm just going, I think, I, Yeah. should I, am I host, co-host yet or? Yes, yes you're host, yes. Host. Okay, great. So let me just tap in here. And for everybody else, if you don't need to be um, speaking at this point in time, it'd be great if you could be on mute, just because we're recording this for other people to be able to watch on YouTube and all the rest. There is def there's time um, in this time together where we're actually going to be working through the creative path and where we'll be hearing from some people. But for now, while we're just diving in, um, let's just leave it at... Um, listening to Gina. And just before Gina dives in, I, I was sharing something earlier um, with Zoom. I'm not sure if everyone knows it, but I found it very useful when you're sharing slides. Um, so everyone, if you are able, take your mouse up to the top and you'll get a view options, uh, uh, what do you call it, a toolbar with a drop down box that, uh, and, uh, yes, so so up to the top with your mouse and you'll get a view options toolbar. And if you 
check the, the drop down box, you'll get um, a side by side mode um, option. Uh, so if you've got that, if you haven't, let me know in the chat or just quickly unmute and let me know. Side by side option. I can't see everyone at the moment. So um, let me see gallery view. There we are. Has everyone got that? Just show me you've got the thumbs up. Yep, everyone's got that. A no up the top uh, or down the bottom. If you're on the phone, you probably won't. So if you're on the phone, I'm sorry. No, yeah, you probably won't have it. But um, for those who are on the computer, then take your mouse across and halfway down the page, you'll see two little lines and you, it, it's got, you know, it's a, it's a link and you can drag across the image of our images, our, our video and, and um, minimize the slide. So you can get a 50, 50 view, which helps I found with, um, uh, with presenting. So I hope that helps. If anyone's still struggling, just let me know briefly. Uh, on the phone, you won't be able to get it, but those are, yes, yeah, Satara, if you're on the phone, you won't be able to get it, but if you're on a computer and you're viewing um, slides, it's, it's really useful. Mm. Um, yeah, great, thanks. Awesome. Okay, so thanks, Joe. Thank you. Okay. So there's a little bit of me now, and um, what I wanted to do was just take a moment and uh, ask for you to ask yourself how you are arriving and what drew you here and what are you hoping to get from this little adventure? And so if you haven't thought about that now or um, what sort of triggered you to, to come to this little mm. adventure with us, it's a good thing to just reclaim that and name it and you can write it down or you can just sense into what that is. So as we move forward with yeah. the winter solstice. Oh, I'll just, just say like, as we're going to move through, there's different points where you might want to be writing yeah. things down. So this is a great time. If you don't have paper and pen, but want it, oh, that yes, would be good the idea. Go and get it. Um, just yeah, while there's, there's a few questions. We all actually arrive and we think about, well, what drew you here? I'm interested in like, if there's a couple of people who know clearly why they, they chose to say yes to this chat, if you just want to like type something in the chat for us around just the different, the different energies that drew us together today, I think it'd just be good to get just a, just mm. a little bit of an insight. Mm. What drew a us flavor. here today when the invitation is come hang out with Gina, Deb and Johanna. Paula said uh, setting intentions for the next 90 day cycle. Thanks Paula. Yes. Yeah, great focus. Yes. Anybody else? It may be something completely different. Hard ah, Deb made me do it. I did. <laughs> Ali and I have been doing some work together in the United States, and I said, Ali, I really think you should be on this. <laughs> and maybe anybody else? Is there any other different reasons? I wanted Joe to uh, wanted to come and be part of this community. Oh, that's wonderful, Joe. Thanks. Okay. It's great to hear. Beautiful. Okay, so Gina, let's dive into some solstice magic. Yes, this is the, the best part. Okay, let's just talk about where we are at the moment. And on the weekend, I did a um, three-day retreat with a, a bunch of people in um, the beautiful Barrel in New South Wales and just outside Sydney. And the winter solstice energy, I've written here winter. It's obviously summer on the other side of the world. So it's, it's the same. The beautiful thing about the solstice, it's a, it's, a, it's a node or a point where there's equal day and night at the moment on the either side of the equator, which means there's a balanced energy. It's like the yin and the yang in balance. And it's the, um, the shortest day of the year as well. So it's in the traditional nature-based cultures, they, it's, it's significant with the type of energy. It's like a portal or a gateway for renewal, for restoration, for this um, abundance that is uh, opening to all of us. So in winter, it's very much about rest and, rest and um, uh, rejuvenation. In summer, it's about connection, deep connection, and uh, very much looking inside as well. 
So that deep inner reflection, it, we, in nature-based cultures, they do that in ceremony and ritual. So on the weekend, we did fire ceremonies and brought in the ancestors and allowed ourselves to connect to many forces within nature that come through the elements and the four directions, as well as earth and sky. The animal kingdom is very, very much present in everything that we were doing. And uh, it's through intention that we connect here. And that's where we can then allow our own personal intentions to be set and be guided by those energies around us and be supported, fully supported by that. And that's the beautiful part about um, this work is that when we believe in that, it, um, it makes a big difference. Yep. So Gina, I'm just wondering for the people listening, if, you know, if people have a connection to your own kind of practice that you might do around solstice or if, if people are interested, yeah. What does that actually mean when you say I did like a ritual thing and we called in the directions? Of- <laughs> I don't uh, know. If okay, so to everybody. Um, yeah. But and I'm just wondering if it's important to share, you know, some kind of like personal ritual or personal something that people could do for themselves to acknowledge their own solstice. Definitely. The way that everybody has unique ways of doing things. Some use um, bowls and instruments to actually call in different uh, forces and, and uh, guides and beings. Others are very much all about intention and drawing that energy inward very deeply. My, my, it's, mine is a combination of both. So I, I play the um, Native American flute and um, I've got bowls as well. I've got a jambe drum, which is really powerful for shifting things out of the way and, and allowing, because the whole idea is for intentions is making space for them. And so when you let something go, there's, there's this space to be filled for this next thing to come through. And uh, my, uh, my intentions are very much about, well, I'm not really wanting to hang on to things for very long if they're not serving me. So whatever it is, I leave it up to my higher self to decide. I say, oh, there we go. Whatever it is I don't need right now, let's make some space because I know that this is where I'm going. And that depends on how the feelings and the intuitive insights and what I'm receiving. And that's always in constant flux. Yeah. So we move at our own pace and, um, you know, I, I like candles. I, there's definitely some uh, incense and uh, clearing done. And then some very sacred reverent, um, I guess it's, some people call them prayers. Some people call them invocations. It depends on where you come from and what, uh, what influences that you've had. So really honour the influences that you've had and honour what your heart is calling you to do as well because that's part of your personality, part of that community of selves and part of your self-expression, the authentic self-expression. So, so if that's you, important. So if anybody does have any personal rituals that they do, maybe you could add it into the chat so we could get a sense yeah. of us all to share. circle with what we do. Like, so for example, for me, I have a strong meditation practice and at times of like new moon or solstice or significant times, I'll go into a bonus round of my meditation, which is dedicated to whatever, whether it's new moon or, or solstice, but like, for example, right now it's both, it's new moon and it's solstice. Um, and I also have a writing practice. So for me, it's a combination of the meditation and the writing. And when I'm not in Brooklyn, it can often, I love to connect with the ocean, but I don't get to do that here right now. Um, but just if there's anybody else who has any other kind of rituals or traditions um, that you use, or just to acknowledge for yourself what works for you and what maybe you could bring into this renewal of your creative practice now. Um, and so Gina, a renewal okay, so that's a little creative path, sorry, I keep saying practice. So let's dive into what that means. And essentially it's a design process and it creates meaning and ceremony and ritual are often missing from our lives, particularly in this Western world. And it's, uh, it provides a, a point of stillness and restoration where we reflect inward 
And uh, that deeper connection connects us to ourselves, but also to nature and, and allows us to listen deeply to what messages are coming to us intuitively or uh, from others and, and consider them differently and approach them with more grace and ease rather than frenetically or in a, in a chaotic manner. And many of us get very busy in that space. So this is a time when we can spend some time with ourselves, restoring our essence. And for the, for the reason of leading ourselves better, a much more meaningful, joyful and purposeful life. Yeah. And there's this constant exchange of energy between all of us. And that then contributes to how we how we show up in the world, our authentic expression and our connection with each other, our relationships. Because I work with well-being and uh, it all starts with self-leadership and to the relationship that you have with yourself. So this is where loving all parts is so essential. We can't reject parts of us because then we leave those parts behind and many of us feel that um, that's okay. But we do need to go back and draw all of those essence parts back to us and love them because that's what they're calling out for. And that's part of the foundations of the renewal that's going on so that we can then look at the inner tracking of all of those aspects because it is a design process that happens and it's a little bit like a vision quest in a way, a personal vision quest where we go inward. And I have seven questions here that I'd love you to uh, participate in answering. So the purpose of these questions is to get us to a point where there is <laughs> ability to understand what type of ideal scene, scene we want for this uh, new future or this renewal uh, at this winter solstice junction. So if you've got a pen and paper handy, um, we'll start with question one and what's written here is a review of good medicine. And this is literally what you do now. What are you doing to restore? What are you doing to look after yourself and, uh, and to really deeply connect with yourself and others? And how does that translate into your life? So you might want to just write down a few points and, um, and just, just go a little bit deep Take a few breaths and we'll just give you a minute to uh, be able to sit with that and write that down so there's no rush. Yeah. It's nice when you think about the things about good medicine, Gina. Like there's some things that I do just because they make me feel better and if I don't do them, I start to go a little bit sideways. Yes. <laughs> I've never framed it before as good medicine. Like I'm, I really like that framing because when I think about it, I'm just like, oh, I've been giving myself some good medicine with my, you know. It feels good because um, we have this perception of medicine being something outside of us. And, yeah. um, you know, we are very capable and have the potential for self-healing. It's, it's the intention and um, the willingness and the commitment to ourselves that really does matter. Mm. Just a couple more seconds for everybody. And then if there's anybody who, who is willing and wanting to, if we could just get a little bit of a run in the chat around what is your good medicine? So like for me, my daily meditation practice is now my daily meditation medicine, absolutely. Sometimes I'm good with the yoga. And one question I have, Gina, around good medicine. So Johanna has swimming. Yeah, beautiful. Paula, stopping the alcohol. That was going to be my question around good medicine being, is it also the things that you're not doing? Yes, exactly. It's a recognition. Yeah, that's it's perfect. Not doing. Yeah, because I'm quite a lush. I love wine and a cold beer on a, cold, on a hot day, but I've just tempered that as my medicine <laughs> oh, joe's got some dance satara's got gardening yeah nice 
Beautiful. Art making for Mark. Great. So we're starting to see that we are our own healers and we've got some good medicine going on. So what's next, Gina? Okay. So that then leads you into what we, we all know is this sole purpose that we've got here on the planet. And what is that great work that we want to do in this world? Often, often we get to a point where there's different, different uh, stages where we learn things and along that path, we acquire this knowledge and uh, we, we're going down different paths, meeting different people, being in different places to experience and add to this, this uh, essence of who we are. And what that sole purpose then does is kind of bringing that all together. And what does that look and feel like? Because we're in this co-creative space. So what is your sole purpose if you had to name it and uh, the way that shows up in, uh, in your life right now? Mm. And that may shift and change. So this is not, this is not, this is current and you're setting up for the next stage on this renewal through this new renewal process may slightly veer off into new directions and new spaces depending on all of that knowledge turning turning it into the the, the essence and the wisdom that you then bring to the world in different ways Soul purpose. I like the idea that the soul purpose can be more than one thing at different phases of your life. Mm. And that it kind of develops with what you learn. Yeah, it's, what you it's like the way. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think we get stuck. There's many people that I've um, worked with who get stuck thinking that this is the path and that's it. And that means that they're kind of controlling it then. We yeah. have to kind of let go of that and allow the higher self and our soul to come through and pave the way for us. And that's where the, it becomes easier. There's the flow that happens with us and everything comes to us. It's a very different approach to chasing something. Mm. So I'm just interested with us gathered as a community today, what kind of soul purpose are we all vibing in at this point in our lives? And if you know that clearly and feel comfortable doing so, you can just share that supporting others to find their voice. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Being an inspirer. Hold on, let me open this up. Wow, best selves. Thank you, Paula. Sharing my knowledge of trees. Yes, Satara. Mine is working with people in transforming their grief, which I, try, I tell you, years ago, I would have never thought that was going to be my sole purpose. <laughs> I really didn't. Being a voice for animals. Beautiful, Ali. Excellent. So now we've got good medicine. We've got a sole purpose. What's next, Gina? So what is the synchronicity that happens for you as you experience your life right now? And, and how flowing? <laughs> what's that flow? Does it happen all the time? Are you in sync with everything? <clears throat> and when does it happen as well? Because often we've got these little patterns. Sometimes we drop in, sometimes we drop out. So it's good to just recognise, acknowledge that and see what it is that's, uh, that's happening for you in that synchronistic space. Hmm. Why is this important, Gina? It makes me curious. Oh, I think synchronicity important. Because, for instance, this little retreat that I had um, put together, um, it's like I received this message for doing a retreat and I thought, okay, well, definitely on the winter solstice. I just knew that. And this was four weeks ago. And I said yes and I, I put this little bit of information together very quickly and just thought, right, yeah, okay, I'll, hand, I'll send it out and see what happens. And the synchronicity of the, the people who came very quickly and everything just falling into place with the venue and um, the, uh, the, the, the person who I was, who I was co-facilitating with, she was available and she had this particular process, I had these particular processes and it just went like this immediately. And there was no, we met once and we spoke twice on Zoom 
and then we arrived at the venue and it just unfolded and everything just it was just was like this crazy just show up and sit there and talk to each other type of experience and and we were just guided completely guided and, and that's the beauty of that synchronistic space what about somebody who's who's experiencing <clears throat> none of that what about if there isn't yeah. a flow or synchronicity with somebody at this point so, in time? so if um if people aren't experiencing that are they aware of it firstly and are they pushing against something is there some discomfort so there's definitely some symptoms there and is there something that they're not listening to within their body which is really most of the time it's um it's it's a disconnect that happens whether that's body mind whether that's heart mind or whichever um way you believe there's something that's just not connecting so that's why this is uh it's a deep letting go process needed here here and, and that's a that doesn't happen overnight paula the universe is always supporting absolutely <laughs> and i think this is also like the bit where i just want to like remind myself and everybody it's like just like deep kindness when doing these kind of processes yeah. with like, you know i know i know that i have some friends who are still trying to figure out their sole purpose and i know that yeah and that's okay at the mm. moment who are still kind of like fighting against all of the change that the world has seen and not quite in the flow with synchronicity and so just at this point just like you know taking the taking the kindness and seeing this as like a, oh i could be interested and curious in this if I'm not experiencing synchronicity now, what, like as Gina says, what am I not listening to or how could I reconnect body and mind? And so let's... And sometimes it's... Oh, I was just going to say, sometimes it's not always in flow because you're on the wrong path anyway. And so it's like, uh-oh. It's like, will you stop? You're not listening. And it's like, take that turn. <laughs> so yeah, it's one of those things. It's, it's a benefit. <laughs> So just being mindful of time, let's move on to number four. Yeah. We may need to... Okay, so speed it up. <laughs> okay. Just what have other... Hear from everybody. All right. Let's hop to it. This is where we want to know what sort of gifts and creative powers we have. And often people just instinctively tell us that. So think about who in your life has told you that through your entire life as well from young child and what you've recognised as well within yourself. And just acknowledge that and name it. Um, and sometimes we, we have a fear of that potential, that creative power. And do you have a fear? And are you stepping into it? Or is it something that is still evolving? So it's just acknowledging that at your level, where you are. Wow, that's great. And I love the, the bit where you say, is there some part where you're either in denial or fear of it? Because mm. I have that experience at times and then as soon as you like surrender everything does get a little sweeter that's right but it's yeah. like i don't let go easily so the surrender is not always easy for me <laughs> like just yeah be sometimes you have to let it be a slippery slide <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes there's a universe pushing me a little bit yeah but it is it is beautiful how much we can see ourselves reflected in others and what they're reflecting back to us yeah yeah so just being yeah. mindful of time and knowing everybody that we're going to send you a pdf with all of these questions and ways you can connect to gina so don't get too stressed if you want more time actually working through these yeah <laughs> don't don't rush this this That's is um, there's more ways that you can do that but let's move on to number five miss gina so here we're facing a few of the obstacles and we're the ones creating those obstacles most of the time and they're being reflected to us so what are you uh, or how are you creating them firstly and what are you recognizing in the past and honoring those and celebrating these moments because we learn so much from them mm. and uh, that's a that's just again a naming that's required because these are the loving all parts that I always talk about that's so important for us. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that this morning, actually, Gina, with like I'm, I'm contemplating a big, we're well, not contemplating, I'm planning a big change, which means lots of things has to happen. And what ah. I was wanting was is I could, I could instantly find all the obstacles and all of the fears. Yeah. Like, it was so obvious. Yeah. 
And I was like, hold on a minute. Like, haven't you done that before? <laughs> actually, then, are you going to repeat the history here? Just, just because you did it once, it doesn't mean it has to be that way. Yeah, I had to give myself a little talking to this morning. Oh, I love those inner conversations. They are so good. They're yeah, so I helpful. So I was so quick to go to the why it couldn't work. Yeah, that's the one. Default. <laughs> the universe is saying, hey, come over here. It's going to be fun. And I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of your own way. <laughs> All right. Okay, number six. Sorry. All right, what? Oh, let's... What? dive in and um this is all about expectations and oh my god that's my favorite by far because that's one of my most challenging ones and i think for women particularly how many expectations do we have from everyone and everything outside of us and and why on earth do we carry them around um is the next question and uh, how do we love ourselves through that particularly because we we know that we are our higher selves and we are whole and we just have to be able to remember that it's a remembering mm. and then once you once you're acknowledging these expectations what's, what's well then it becomes it, instead of um like like i said before default when you start to change your story or if you're moving through um, shifting an old identity into the new identity of this more authentic self uh, through your, your expression and your gifts, that then um, makes a big difference to how you uh, can tap into the source more easily and more quickly rather than the fear. So it's kind of like you choose love or you choose fear and you can't have one um, or the other. It's, it's kind of they're interdependent and they're constantly weaving. But when you, when you have a practice where you have a dialogue running towards love, that's what is going to be the habitual dialogue that is embodied um, because our body holds all of this, um, I guess, some energy within it. And so we want to be releasing a lot of the old story out of the body and the mind and uh, the dialogue and uh and but we have to consciously shift it and change it ourselves right and that's number six so number seven where do we arrive number seven okay so this is the best part this is after we've identified all of these things and patterns um what is it that we're bringing into our lives now in this coming it can be only three months it can be a year it depends on your commitment to you so you might have this punctuation of three months where this is what I'm going to do because that's I'm going to get to the end of that three months and then reflect again. I have to um, drive my son oh. to work. Is this cool? Jackie? I think, yeah, I think it's Jackie. She hasn't got, I haven't been able to, I, I haven't been able to mute. A, I'm sorry about that. It was a, also, it was cold. Oh, okay. And I, Got to set uh, my alarm as well. You can mute, mute Jackie, um, um, Gina. Yeah. Just going on to her. Is there a mute Yeah, it's kind yeah. of darker yeah, just and colder. Going on. Solstice. Uh, yes. Hello, Jackie. Yes. Jack, yeah. Have you yeah. been out Jackie. for a Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> can you see it? No. Yeah, the top. Oh, hang on. Jackie, Jackie. Joe, no. Oh, there she is. No, no, no. no. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. If you make too. me host, I can. I am. Yeah, that's I can I talk. Which one is it under? Okay, so under. if you go um, onto her screen, the three dots, you drop down the box, the box, it should give you the option as host to mute. Coming to the office. Drop a picture to put show names, disable, hide. Hmm. Not there? No. Try going to participants and muting her. You go down to the bottom oh, and click yeah, up the participants. Okay, gotcha. You should be able to yeah. meet her there. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be easier. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Yes. right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Always fun. <laughs> so, so now we're moving into painting and creating this future ideal scene. And what does that look like? We have this this information, this data, which is ready and um, I guess ready to be sculpted into what it is that we want to move forward uh, 
And so don't rush into this. This is something that requires a little bit of inner reflecting, looking at that inner landscape, because it's a, paint, it's a painting that we're uh, creating here. What does that look and feel like? And it, it's a heart-centered approach. It's not the mind running off and going in its usual way uh, off on its own story, its familiar story. Because if you want to create something, we have to create a new pathway, we have to create a new dialogue, a new way of being, and that requires a wholeness. So we have to go a bit deeper in that space for the ideal scene to emerge. So don't rush that. So for people in the ideal scene, Gina, is that like yep. literally like doing a mind map or writing about it or painting it literally like is it do you bring in your creativity there and actually create it or is it more that you're inspiring it it's both it's everything and all of that because we'll go through uh, we can go through processes and on the weekend when i on the um retreat we went through a process what's called you uh, designing soul cards and um, I made this one and it was all about love and nourishing myself and sharing that love. And I guess it's just understanding whatever comes through for you just by looking at pictures and pasting them on a little bit of paper, it's powerful. You know, I've got a leaf here in the corner, which is red. And you know, there's a picture of this person always on holiday and um, there's me and this beautiful love heart, share the love. So my whole, my whole um, direction right now is being the love so I can share as much of that as possible. And that requires me to really connect deeply and, and also then share that with people in nature because that's where I want to be. And even though I call myself the urban shaman, we're always in nature. It's, yeah. There's this wholeness that we acknowledge. So Gina, I just also want to acknowledge that it's been amazing you sharing your love with us right now. I'm just acknowledging that we are at time. Uh -huh. Some people may need to move on to their Monday. Please don't leave us if you don't have to, because there's just a, we're just going to wrap up a little bit with Gina, and then we're going to Gina's going to share with you other ways that you can connect with her. But Gina, if you can possibly do the the stop of the share of the screen. Yep. This, we can all come back together. Great. See, this always happens. This is what I said, you know, to Gina and Yo before we came on. It's like, it always goes fast. These chats are always. I know. Fast. I know. <laughs> so if you do have something that's a, a hard, I've got to go at 9 a.m., we completely understand that we are at time. We thank you so much for being with us. If you can hang on for another five, maybe seven minutes, that would be beautiful to continue with you. Um, I just wanted to make a little bit of space, knowing that we just have a little bit of space. Now that Jean has taken us through those seven questions, which is our exploration of renewal of our creative path, um, is there anybody who has any kind of inspiration that came along or something they now know that they didn't know at the beginning or a question that they have for Gina while we have Gina on the screen for us? And if you do have something that you're wanting to share, maybe you could just raise your hand and we can see if there's any particular questions or comments or insights from that process. No, nothing in particular for anybody? I think people are bubbling, Deb. It's, it's uh, been, you know, internal and I can feel myself. I'm, mm. you know, it's taking me, it's taking, taking, taken me on the journey. And like you said, Gina, on, on an adventure. So I'm, you yeah, know, but that's right. where I am. I am in touch with something internal. So it yeah. does take a while to come out of that. Um, Great. But Thanks. beautiful. I know personally I've had lots of, Mm. Uh, you know, starting to just move through into a, uh, the different layers in of myself and connect with that really core soulful um, energy in myself. So yeah, I wanted to acknowledge that, Gina. It's yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So yeah, I completely get it. That you, in the creative juices, Gina. Do you want to share um, how people can stay connected to you? 
And yes. so, so basically this is a, um, a, 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 what I call a short course that I'm doing um, with my community and um, I'm drawing people in to an online space. So it's interactive and then doing three group sessions, three group Zoom sessions on three nights over eight days. So we're doing one question on each day and then coming together on that final day to, to share. And when we share in group energy, it's very, very powerful. And I experienced that on the weekend in, um, with eight people in a group uh, face to face, but it's just as powerful on, uh, online. So yes. this is where a lot of growth can take place and a lot of shifting can take place. And we always, always, always reflect to each other everything that we need. And in fact, it's so much more powerful because what's in you is in me. Or what's in you is in me, I mean. <laughs> and so there's this, there's this beautiful collective energy that is shifted and brought into being when we work together in groups. And so we do the individual work through that uh, online platform and we work together in the Zooms and then we come together in that circle and see what happens. This is like the cauldron and there's three types of cauldrons happening throughout that eight days and allowing that to bubble to whatever it is that's needed and leaving it to the universe essentially. So if you are uh, happy to, to go on that journey and that little adventure with me, there's that option or... Um, you can connect with me on uh, email, info at ginayellamus.com, um, my website. All of that sort of stuff, well, Deb will send a little email. But um, the, the, um, the, because it is the winter solstice now, it's starting tonight. The, uh, I'm starting the group tonight. So that's why um, this is perfect timing if you're ready. But I understand because it's a little bit short uh, notice. <laughs> but there's nothing like diving in um, at this being spontaneous. If you have a, if you have the opportunity to do that. So Deb will obviously organize that I'm information. Gonna say, I'm just going to say info at geniegalamus.com. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to put that in the chat because it takes a while to upload the replay to YouTube. Oh stuff. yes. So I yes. will be an email contact with everybody who registered, but it's going to take me a couple of days. So <laughs> if you want to join Gina tonight, Paul is asking what time tonight, Gina? Uh, 6.30 to about 7.30, 7.45. So, so if you're yeah, interested, love to have you. Mm. Yeah, info at ginayalamus.com. Reach out to Gina today and some magic can happen and synchronicities, you know, and you never know, like you, Gina, this is how I met you. You jumped into Fearless Force. Exactly. Literally two days before. <laughs> We're calling a woman in and you turned up. There's um, a question. And, in yeah, the... it's amazing. Joe's um, in, in yeah. is tonight a group one to kick off? Yes. So I'm, we're going to first do that first question together if you choose to. And you could, the beautiful thing is that you've started it. So you could spend some time um, dwelling on it or just making space for it to emerge and, um, and then come together with the group tonight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gina, Gina, thank you so much. Exciting. All of yeah. Thanks for having me. That was so great. Thanks for everybody for showing up. And um, this is for you, essentially. It's a commitment to you. And uh, this is a portal, a gateway. We need to take advantage of these beautiful energies that nature provides. Yeah. Mm, beautiful, Gina. So there's just a way that we like to finish our chats, which um, if everyone um, is able to stay for just one more minute, we're just going to finish in the way that we do which is by acknowledging that we have all been together and that we thank and see each other. So the way that it works is that I will be by acknowledging somebody in the space and I will say, thank, I see you and thank you. And after they have been acknowledged, they then acknowledge the next person. And we just keep moving around the space until we have had a chance to acknowledge everybody here. So I will begin and we will acknowledge everybody. I'm not quite sure if Jackie is actually still with us. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how we roll. We'll see how we roll. <laughs> um, so in I'm, spirit. <laughs> yeah, let's just rock in. Let's just rock in. Sitara. 
I see you. Thank you. Joanna, I see you. I thank you. Mm, thank you, Satara. Jen Barkman, I see you and I thank you. Mm. Thank you. Ali H, I see you and I thank you. And I see your beautiful dog too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Gina, I see you and I thank you so much. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you. Paula, I see you and I thank you. Um, Joe Evans in Melbourne, I see you and I thank you. Thank you, Paula Kensington. Sandy, I see you and I thank you. Unmute. Are you unmuted oh. there? No, you're Did still muted. Froze. Oh. Okay. Are. There we are. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. I think Deborah is have you been acknowledged? I've been with Christina and Jackie are the last two. And I, I Okay, Chris are the last. Christina, I see you and I thank you. Ah, thank you. Oops. Okay, sorry, I was <clears throat> on the list because I'm like, I don't know who hasn't been done. So um, I've forgotten who was the last person. Jackie, but I'm not quite sure if Jackie is with us. She's still on mute. Ah, I'll say it anyway. Jackie, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Calling Jackie in. So I will see and acknowledge Jackie. I will see and acknowledge all of you. Thank you so much for being with us, for moving fearlessly. Number three, you're <laughs> going to be back every week. And the next, next one that we're having is actually we're shifting it up a little bit. We're going to start Wednesdays. Monday's a little bit of a hard start. We're noticing that people like on a Monday morning, too many things are going on. So we're going to rock and roll into Wednesdays for the month of July to try that out, to see how we're going. And we're continuing on with creativity and gifts. So we're going to have Marg Coots, who's going to talk to us about working with our creative rooms and giving ourselves some creative freedom. And we're also going to have another fearless woman who um, is amazing. Her name is Kristen Haywood. And she is a gift spotter. So she works with um, being able to help you to identify your personal gifts and how you bring them out into the world. And so please, please, please continue to join us. But on a Wednesday, moving forward, um, I'm going to send emails to you all with the replay of this and an invite to the next chat. And it's been an absolute delight. And, Yo and before, <clears throat> Yes, and just before we go, yeah, thanks so much, Deb. Thanks so much, Gina. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Let's bring our bodies in and give everyone a sparkulation, an elevated sparkulation to finish um, uh, and spread this love and generosity and creativity on our pathways <laughs> to renewal. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.